the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Hey, roll call, uh, Mrs. Mayor. Yeah, absolutely. Jeff Young. Here. Cheryl Hancock. Here. Anita Jacosinski. Here. Kate Mayor, I'm here. Lisa Collins. Here. Tim Mediker. Here. Gary Dunlap. Here. And Tom Cruz. Here. All right, we're all here. Thank you. With seven of the seven school board members present, I would declare a quorum. <coughs> board norms reflection, just a reminder that there are a copy of the board norms um, in your folder to take a look at those as we proceed through tonight's meeting. Approval of the agenda. I would note that the agenda has been posted, distributed, um, and sent to the local media. With this in mind, are there any changes? Seeing none, I would entertain a motion to approve the agenda as published. I move. Second. Motion's been made and seconded to approve the agenda as published. All those in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed, nay. Motion carries. Public participation. Is there anyone who wishes to address the board relative to any item at this time? We ask that a five minute time period per person be followed. Please come forward, state your name, address, and topic to be addressed. I don't really see anyone coming forward this evening, so then we will move on to reports and discussion. Um, Dr. Carlson. Thank you. In your board packet, you have base wage determination recommendations for seven employee groups, which are listed under reports and discussion from item 8.1 to 8.7. And you also see them listed on the consent agenda as items 9.7 through 9.13. I want to thank those involved in this important process, including board members, <clears throat> employee group members, administrators, and supervisors. As you review each recommendation, you will note that two of the recommendations come in the form of an agreement that has been ratified by the membership of the specific associations. For the other employee groups, the recommendation comes to the board this evening after a series of events, including the opportunity to share information and get feedback with all employees of, of those groups. While there are legal differences we must follow with bargaining groups and non-bargaining groups, we have been intentional in working uh, and involving our employees in the process. So as you review the recommendations, you will note a few things in common about the process regardless of, of what group, including the determination was based on an overall increase of 1.62% as directed uh, again by the board through the budget process. Also the distribution of that 1.62% varies between groups uh, due to the number factors including steps or longevity with most of our groups, lanes as with our teacher group, and percent per cell versus flat dollar amount per cell. And so again, that's unique to those different groups. And uh, as I already mentioned, involving staff in the process. So we, have, we do have one employee group remaining, which we plan to bring to the board on June 22nd. Uh, the reason simply is due to scheduling conflicts with the people involved. So the recommendations, again, are also on the consent agenda this evening, and I would open up for if there's any <coughs> questions. I know a number of people have been involved, and but if there are any questions. Otherwise, it's kind of, uh, they are listed separately, <coughs> but I've kind of clumped them together regarding my comments for you. Any questions? And these are all included on the consent agenda this evening? Correct. Any questions? Okay. Thank you. Then moving on to employment um, employee handbook language revisions. Melissa. Evening. Um, so the language that you'll find in your packet tonight for the handbook applies um, only to the administrative section of the handbook, so part four, um, and specifically to administrators under their retirement language. Um, the language that's being presented tonight is a change from the current language. Um, however, it is a method that has been used in most recent years um, as a distribution of payout um, for the past for some administrators over the past few years. So um, there is an IRS requirement that only allows us to offer one method of payout. So that is the reason for this change in the language. Um, 
There are also some advantages as you'll read through that rationale um, and the language for making this change, um, advantages to the employee and the district as well. Um, the introduction of the HRA in this language as a means of distribution would allow the employee to avoid net effect um, costs of FICA, WRS, and income tax deductions, um, which are required under the cash distribution. And then the district would eliminate the FICA benefit expense as well, which is associated with that cash payout um, and not within that um, HRA and TSA option. So um, those are the changes in that language. Um, any questions on that? Otherwise, I had one other note as well. And this was one of the issues that was um, brought, discussed at um, public participation last Correct. meeting, but it is, this is just for administrators and that is the um, direction that the um, administration had been moving um, just for the administrative group. There was an interest in pursuing that because of the benefits um, to them, to the individuals. So, um, and that is not on the agenda this evening. That will be on the next agenda then since it's, it seems that we are in agreement and since the group is interested in that. So, Melissa? And, um, last meeting we had presented about the post-employment retirement deadline for the teachers. And I believe in your packets this evening you'll have a survey that I did of other local districts and what their retirement deadlines are. And um, based on the feedback we had received from the board members at the last meeting and then that survey that was conducted, we did make a change to that final language, which is in your consent packet tonight um, to March 1st. So um, we had put that January date in there. Um, we have now moved it based on that feedback to March 1st. So um, if you have any questions, otherwise that is in the consent packet this evening. And that's just you did that because of everybody else's all the other districts did the same and thing? the feedback that we had received at the board meeting when it was presented I think the initial proposal was to move it two months back this is really just moving it well 30 30 days I think we looked at it um, upon Anita's suggestion that maybe a compromise you know February 28th would have been the compromise but with leap years we thought that didn't make sense because it you know would change and be confusing so that's why the March 1st date was selected so this gives us a little bit less time to pick another to fill a job, but that's that's your problem, right? <laughs> Extra four weeks will help. So. Yeah, okay. It will, right? Yeah. So, any questions? So, yes, that compromise is part of the consent agenda this evening. Okay, thank you. And then, um, student parent handbooks. I think we might have uh, representatives come up, our principals from the various levels come up and just, again, kind of a, a range of changes. Uh, there may not be as significant changes at certain levels, but uh, thank you for being here tonight and presenting the handbooks. And again, the, these handbooks will be on the consent agenda at the next board meeting on the 22nd. Good evening, everyone. Good evening. Just wanted to let you know that the Home and Public Preschool, which consists of early childhood and 4K, that, that handbook really has date changes in it and an update to the locations of our program. Um, the only other change I would say is in the RTI section. We also included the Wisconsin Pyramid model because our staff was selected to receive training to become a district-wide program implementation site. So those are really the only changes to the Public Preschool handbook. Elementary change is very similar. Uh, we had the dates change, the name of the board members who are, who are new. We also have our nursing staff double check immunization if, if those are current. Um, one thing that we have in our uh, handbook is a statement that indicates that it can be changed at any, any time. The most recent one is always updated online. So we have that, um, boy, since the inception of this handbook, so we can be flexible to things that come up at the elementary school. So that's essentially it for elementary. Thank you. Um, in the middle school handbook, um, really everything right now in there is status quo as well. In the communication section, we just put in a note there, um, kind of just an extra urge to parents of um, if you could please get your email address to us, um, that's essential. We do a lot of communication through that, so I think just a little bit of a a point on that. Um, also changing of the lunch prices, um, those being subject to change and, and approval, I believe, by the board um, in July. Um, 
but then just some items that we're still waiting on to change. Um, as you all know, we have the rather large one-to-one -one initiative that we're implementing next year at the middle school. And currently at this time, we have an exceptional group that is working on the implementation of that and getting some feedback on what that's going to look like. And so some of the things that we're going to be talking about is what information do we want to go into our handbook um, so that we have the right information that's in there. Um, and we, we just need some more time, so we will be coming back to you with those changes that are in there about that information as well as um, there's new information in there about the directory data, but with recent changes that are out there with directory data, we just wanna make sure that we have that wording correct um, with any changes that are happening um, with that. The final piece um, that we're looking at is um, right now with student accident insurance, um, just making sure that what we're doing as a district, we have that worded correctly in there as well. And so we believe that we have that in the right spot right now, but I thought it was important just to bring that forward that those three items are items that we are making sure that we have written in there correctly um, as those changes take place. Good evening. Nothing drastically new at the high school either, just a matter of cleaning a few things up. But um, kind of to reiterate what Ryan said about one-to-one, -one, we, we will be seeing some major changes or additions for next year as we approach the one-to-one -one in the following year. Otherwise, it was a matter of housekeeping for the high school for this next year. Okay. Any questions? Any Can questions? I make a comment? Um, why don't we go with the question first? Um, I noticed, uh, I was looking through all the different handbooks and I know they're different ages and different grades and stuff. I think it's kind of funny. The high school one, there's more highlighting or there's more bolding. Is, is that, I'm just curious, who creates these handbooks? How'd, how'd they come about? Um, Mr. Sackett had a group that he worked with this year. It was kind of the PBI, PBIS committee. Same for all of them? I'm just curious how, they're, how, they're, how they were created. I, I think that we come forward to you with information and changes that we have or um, taking just directive on, on initiatives and different things that we have and making sure that that information is there. Um, with our handbook, I would say that um, myself and some office staff are the ones that, um, that take the initiative on making those changes at the middle school. Teachers have an input too? I would say that our, our teachers have input if there is something directly impacting a program, and so they have input on what that program is. But when I'm looking at the wording that's in the handbook, um, I would say that that's something that from the program that we have in the building, um, that then I put that in the handbook to try and get that information out to our parents. I understand. I, I'm just curious on the, the methodology, how it's created, and if the teachers have any input in it or if they have if it's a if, you know I, I see all the changes the housekeeping changes you change the name you change the price or whatever but I didn't know if there was everything that changes in education it seemed like they would be helpful they had some more input but maybe you do that you just you just talk to them and you get information because I, what I also noticed they're all different I, I thought that was pretty cool that mm -hmm. they were each a little bit unique Mm -hmm. And I um, and I also noticed the grammar in the high school one. It's just it seems like it really drops the hammer down. Maybe you, you maybe because you expect the students to take some more responsibility as opposed to the parents keeping an eye at the kids and yeah. not expecting them to be have as much authority or much responsibility. I'm trying to give you a compliment. I just was, I'm just curious on how these things are created because sure. I think it's important that uh, I mean it's your manual for the school and it's uh, I don't know how often your teachers throw their two cents in so. Well, and I think, too, that the student parent handbook is part of a notification co communication tool that's used by the district to share information, especially parents in the, the elementary and the middle school and then students themselves. And they, I know in the elementary school and the middle school, there are different formats. The high school is a calendar and format and then the information is included in that calendar and um, so sometimes those things have to be a little shorter and that type of thing but and and do parents have access to it both in hard copy and then it is online I know that it's online a lot of times it's referred to there but mm -hmm. if parent wanted one in hard copy they have access to that as well so yep. and Kate just very briefly I know that um, parent handbook your reports are very short but I know the work that goes into them is very long, and it involves a lot of people, parents, 
all kinds of stakeholders. And I just appreciate that because one teeny tiny point can last an hour to talk about. And I appreciate the time you put into that. So thank you. Yep. And I'm the rest of the board too appreciates all the work you do. I know sometimes it seems like it's just housekeeping or that kind of thing, but something missed can have a big impact on the district. So thank you for your um, attention to all of those details. I, I just wanted to say working in a middle school, you I, I can tell you how many times we thumb through that <laughs> handbook and find the exact wording for the reason why we're about to do something so we can show it to people because mm -hmm. they don't know. And you really do go through it word for word to make sure every word in there is accurate because if it's not, you 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 take out those post-it tabs and mark it for the next year. So that's why, it's, I, to, at least for my end, they're always just kind of updated every yeah. year. But boy, you sure you make sure. So yeah. good job. It's a lot of work. Thank you. So look, here we are at consent agenda items. Um, are there any items that board members would like to have? considered separately. Otherwise, I would entertain a motion to approve the consent agenda as presented. I make a motion. Motion to approve as presented. Yes, yes ma'am. And a second? Second. Any discussion? Seeing none, all of those in favor of approving the consent agenda items as presented, please signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed, nay. Motion carries. Moving on to <coughs> board member reports and discussion. I'll call on board members in the order of the roll call and ask for any committee reports or discussion or comments that they'd like to make. Um, I didn't get the list. So we'll start with Jeff. Sorry, Jeff. <laughs> any comments or Wait, are we that you'd like to make? Come on, Jeff. Any, any Sorry, any caught you off guard. It's so quick. <laughs> How about I'll just wait? I'll come back to you. My prerogative. Okay. Anita. Okay. Um, I usually don't have a real lot to say, but tonight I really think it's important to um, share some concerns that I hope are at the forefront of everybody's mind having to do with public education and what's going on at the state level. And I know at the last meeting Tim talked about it a bit um, and brought it to people's attention, but I, I've been reading lately, um, I noticed that some superintendents in our area and I got our board um, older passed around tonight and it's nice to see that at, tomorrow at CESA some of the area superintendents are going to be meeting and there will be a press release regarding um, their stance on what's happening with the budget <clears throat> items and what's going on in Madison with school funding and things that were put into the budget packet and Dale will be attending that and that is wonderful. Um, there's a letter that the superintendent um, in River Falls, there's a, he sent an open letter to the community there and it's pretty succinct. And um, I just wanted to touch on, he has 10 points that he really wants people to realize about public schools and funding and items that the state budget proposes that will impact our schools. And it's, I'm, I'm bringing these up tonight and it might take a couple minutes to read these, but I really think it's important because I'm surprised at the number of people who don't realize the impact that these things are gonna have on our public education system forever, forever and they will impact your child's education. Um, so I'm just gonna read his 10 points. Um, again, he refers to River Falls in here and I'll change Holman when I remember to, but um, he says that um, the current state budget and related legislative proposals will have a significant and lasting negative implication for the, for the school districts and all public schools in the state. Uh, as part of a school district's responsibility to the community, it's important for these issues to be brought to the public's attention. And this is a brief summary of the 10 things the public mm -hmm. should know. Vouchers. Uh, public school districts across the state will have their state aid cut to allow for voucher expansion. These are public tax dollars used to pay for a student's private education. Voucher expansion will mean less money for public schools, including Holman. Voucher impact. Students from, again, he refers to River Falls, could receive vouchers to attend private religious or secular schools. We, they would lose $7,856 for each high school student from the district to support private and religious school education. These funds are state tax dollars. If private schools around the state are publicly funded as proposed, their district, which would also be Holman, will struggle to maintain the educational quality that people in Holman have worked so hard to build. 
decreased funding. Funding for public education is declining while mandates, those are demands put on us, are escalating. National decline, the state education budget drives Wisconsin under the national average in per pupil spending. The legislature is pouring money into private, private voucher schools at the expense of maintaining a public system that has been our source of pride in this state for more than 100 years. A freeze, the legislature plans a no future cost of living increases for teachers and other staff. This threatens Holman's ability to attract and retain high quality faculty now and in the future. Offering nothing will undermine our ability to maintain, let alone improve the high quality education our children currently receive. Extracurricular, the new law, and again, these, some of these things are policy items that the Joint Finance Committee snuck into the, this budget bill in the middle of the night at 1.30, as Tim referred to at the last meeting. No discussion, no public hearings, no public input. Extracurricular, the new law would allow homeschooled students and virtual school students to participate in any curricular, extracurricular or athletic team that our district offers. This means students from area private schools would also be eligible to participate on our school's team in certain sports. This raises a multitude of eligibility questions and different eligibility requirements for members of the same team. It also means that kids who are homeschooled or voucher schooled could bump Holman students, athletes off of our team, which I don't think a lot of people realize. Number seven, dilutes diplomas. <clears throat> the new law would allow learning portfolios to replace up to one half of the credits needed to graduate from high school. I'm gonna read that again. The new law would allow learning portfolios to replace up to one half of the credits needed to graduate from high school. Concerns include the likelihood that the rigor needed to earn a high school diploma will be significantly reduced, jeopardizing both in and out of state college acceptance. License to teach. <clears throat> The new law eliminates many, many standards for licensing teachers with no bachelor's degree needed to teach our students in multiple subject areas. School districts, I'm sure, do not intend to hire non-certified teachers or teachers without college degrees, but nonetheless, this brings up much concern about deprofessionalization of teaching in Wisconsin. Special ed vouchers, the proposed law allows students in special ed to use $12,000 in publicly funded annual vouchers to attend private and parochial schools. But in these schools, these students would not be guaranteed the legal rights and protections that are afforded to them by federal law. At the same time, the legislature is allocating money for special ed students in private and parochial schools. It is not increased funding for public school ed, special ed students in eight years. Number 10 is testing, which I'm sure we're all pretty sick of. <laughs> the standardized state tests that students are required to take will be different for the third consecutive year. Districts will not be required to take the same tests, which makes district to district comparisons very difficult. Our students do extremely well on the standardized tests. They are given and we welcome the opportunity to compare ourselves to any competing school. But common sense tells us that adequate comparison can only be made when students in each district are taking the same standardized tests. And finally, what can be done? The time is now to voice our opposition to policies and legislation that will undermine our ability to support quality education for our kids. Please, parents, if you are out there watching this, be active in advocating for our schools with the legislature, the Joint Finance Committee, they, add, they answer to all of us, not just, not just the people in their own districts and Governor Walker. The future of Holman's children depends on your involvement. And that's all I have. Okay, thank you. Um, Kate Mayer. Thank you, Anita, for being intelligent and eloquent. What you just said, ditto. These are um, really horrific times as we struggle as a board to figure out what to do with less and less money. Um, so I thank you for all that you just said, and I'm not gonna go any further than that, but I do appreciate it, and I do piggyback on top of you. Please, people, look at what 
laws will do to Holman School District. It's big. It's very big. Okay, thank you, Lisa Collins. I can't, I can't really follow any of that. I, I totally agree with all that also, and I don't really have anything else to add. Thank you. Tim Menninger? Uh, just a couple of things this evening. First off, thanks, Anita, for those wonderful information. Mm -hmm. um, I, I, I guess in following up on uh, something I had thought about, and I think it's important we continue to have our voices heard, but there is one thing that if we haven't already done, we can do something about, and I hope that we have a board policy that says that we will not hire unlicensed teachers and if we don't I would like to have the personnel and governance committee maybe take that up yes. um, because that is something that we absolutely can do something about and so if Already we on my first agenda for next year so so. if we don't have that in a policy if yeah. we could uh, certainly uh, take a look at that that would be wonderful um, and then the only other thing and I think everybody knows I see Cheryl's already smiling we only have three more board meetings ah. tonight after the fall sports <laughs> start. So just keep that in mind. Summer will go fast. Yes, it will. Okay. Three? Gary three Dunlap. Three more after tonight. I'd like to ask the middle school principal, what was the, I don't want to get it wrong, what was the recognition for the middle school? Um, oh, yeah. Congratulations on that. Well deserved. You guys work hard over there. and. I'm proud to have my grandkids over there. <laughs> and also, I went to a fifth grade graduation at Sand Lake at 6 o'clock in the evening, and it was packed. It was, there was like 400 parents there. It was great. They had to be bringing chairs in from all over and just pack that gym up. And uh, uh, it was great to see the kids, and they all sang songs, and it was very professionally done. And my granddaughter felt like she graduated college, I think. So. <laughs> but thank you for that. That's all I have. Thank you, Gary. Um, Tom Cruise. Um, no, I, I echo the concerns that. Uh, <coughs> thanks for reading that letter, Anita. Um, we'll have to uh, sharpen our pencils, I suppose. Right, thank you. Hey, and then Jeff, anything? Okay. Uh, <laughs> the last week of school, I saw that we got shelves in the bathrooms, and I'm really happy about that so people don't have to put their books on the ground. Oh, good. Um, I wish all high school students safe over the summer, and today is my birthday. So. Oh, <laughs> happy birthday! <laughs> How old are you today? Seventeen. You little Ooh. puppy. <laughs> I've got shoes that are seventeen. <laughs> <laughs> I do too. 